energy, so any kind of energy, can never be destroyed, okay? So if you imagine, like, energy comes to us from the sun, um, hits plants, we looked at that in our leaves lesson, leaves use the energy from the sun to grow, and then maybe a cow eats the plant, the cow uses up some of that energy to move around, it makes noises, so it gives off energy that way, um, it gets hot, so it gives off heat energy to the environment, and some of that energy goes into building its muscles, and people who eat meat end up eating some of the cow, and then that energy goes into us. Um, that's why I'm not a vegetarian actually, but it's why vegetarians have the right answer, because if you have 100 units of energy in the plant, it's much better to eat that plant and get all 100 units of energy than it is to give the plant to a cow and the cow makes noises and breathes and stuff and uses up a load of the energy and then you eat the cow and you only get like 50 units of energy. You're going to stop talking about eating cows. Get your hands and just rub them together for me. Okay? Rub your hands together. That is kind of a, a model for electricity. Have you noticed that your hands have got a little bit warm? Okay, this is like a basic circuit for a torch. So you've got a battery wires with electrons in them and a light and if you connect the battery to the wire then all the little electrons start moving around the wire and they repel they move away from the negative side and the battery gives them energy so they carry the energy to the bulb give off their energy to the bulb so we see the light and then they come back to the battery and they get more energy and that's how it works um, but inside the wire these electrons are moving around they're bumping into other little particles inside the wire and um, you might have noticed that sometimes if you touch a wire or a plug it feels quite warm now usually that's bad because we want all the energy from our battery to go into lighting up the bulb we don't want it wasted as heat but actually the first light bulbs they use this as a good thing because when things get really really hot they give off light and the idea of the first light bulbs was you have something inside the glass that gets so hot that it gives off light. Now, we looked at Thomas Edison in our electricity lesson yesterday. Uh, actually, the light bulb that he invented at his time had a little bit of bamboo inside the glass, which wasn't great because it was quite dim and it was quite fragile. What they really wanted to use was a metal called tungsten um, because tungsten can get really, really hot without melting, so it would give off loads of light. The only problem is tungsten is very brittle, like it breaks very easily, so he couldn't put it inside. And then someone who worked for the company that Edison ran, called William Coolidge, came up with this absolutely beautiful bit of engineering. This is what he did to get tungsten into a light bulb, okay? First he turned the tungsten into a powder, and then he pressed the powder so it made like a bar of tungsten again. Then he ran a current through the bar of tungsten while heating it and then cooling it down again. And then he heated it again and put some hydrogen over it. And then he hammered it and then he heated it again and very, very slowly drew it into a really, really long wire. Um, because the longer the wire, the more work the electrons have to do to get through the wire and the more collisions, so the more heat the wire would give off. And then, and this is what I didn't know, and was like really geekily excited by, if ever that I only have this teeny tiny little bulb, just one of these old fashioned light bulbs now, but if you've ever had a look inside a really old fashioned light bulb, you will see that it looks a bit like this. You might see that there's a tiny bit of, there's two bits of metal and then there's a tiny bit of wire inside that's all coiled up. I didn't know, but it's actually a double coil. So what Coolidge did was, he got um, a piece of tungsten that was 50 centimetres long and he coiled it so that it turned it into a piece about 8 centimetres long and then he coiled it again to make it 2 centimetres long so what's inside uh, the light bulb is actually a, a double coil <laughs> um, and if you're impressed by that then you should, you should definitely be my friend um, but he, he crammed so much wire into there that it gave off loads and loads of light um, so this is actually, like I say, a beautiful piece of engineering. The other thing was, if there's oxygen inside there, obviously stuff burns really well in oxygen, so it would burn too fast. So you put argon gas inside, which doesn't really do anything. So that made the, the filament last even longer. So that was an old-fashioned light bulb, which was a gorgeous piece of engineering. The only problem is, um, if you imagine you've got your battery attached to it, like 90% at least of the energy from the battery came off as 
peat, and only 10% of the energy you put in your pantry was actually used as light. So we call that massively inefficient. You've got to just keep throwing away your batteries. Or if, if it was a light bulb in your house, which it certainly was when me and the adults in your house were younger, then you end up using loads and loads of electricity to just make a load of heat. Hello, I'm me and George. So that's a bit rubbish. So quite recently, we thought we're not gonna use those anymore. And we started producing energy saving light bulbs. Now, if you saw my Northern Lights lesson, energy saving light bulbs certainly used to work quite a lot like that. Do you remember I said that when atoms get really excited, then the electron pops up and then down again and that gives off a little particle of light so modern day energy saving light bulbs have got mercury gas in them and electrons shoot into the mercury gas get the mercury atoms really excited and the mercury atoms give off little photons of light now that was much better it was like much more energy efficient but it wasn't great because inside of the, those bulbs was really complicated so then they were really hard to recycle and they had mercury gas in them which is incredibly toxic so if you broke it in your house that wasn't good but also when it went to landfill that wasn't very good and also again your grown-ups will remember that when you used them you turned them on and then it was like still darkness and you had to wait about five minutes for them to warm up so that wasn't great either so actually what we use now are teeny tiny little light bulbs called LEDs, light emitting diodes, and they're brilliant. They last ages. They use hardly any energy. They're not toxic. There's no warm up time. Um, the only problem was they use a different kind of current to the one um, that comes into our houses. Uh, and they use a much, much lower voltage as well. So you use something called a transformer. They've got teeny tiny little transformers in them which gives it the right kind of voltage and courage to use. We are going to talk about transformers in a minute. Um, the only thing with LEDs is they're really, really super bright. So you can see better in here. Um, what you do is you put like 10 or 20 of them inside and then probably the light bulbs in your house, you'll see that they're, uh, they're quite, they're sort of coated with, what's the word I'm looking for? They diffuse the light. Frosted, that's what I'm looking for. They're a bit frosty so that you don't just get like a violent beam into your house. So there you go, so those are, those are the modern day light bulbs that we use, that's the journey uh, that we've been on. The only problem with LEDs is that they are a bit more expensive, but they do last a lot longer. So if you can afford them, you save money in the long run. Mm -hmm.